Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to animate the aliens. We created some nice looking aliens in the last lesson and they're just sitting there. So we want to make them move. And we can do that within that same animation function that we have, which is the update function. And going through and just checking to see what their position is. So we can add them right in the beginning of this function, creating a temp aliens node list. So this is going to be a variable object. So using document and query selector all, we're going to select all the elements on the page that have a class of alien. So this is the one that we just set. And these are going to apply to all the ones that we dynamically generated. And then you can see if I log out temp aliens, you're going to see that we're going to get a lot of stuff logged out. But we get the whole node list of all the aliens that we have available. So that means that we can loop through this list of aliens and apply our animation to them. And the way that we want to do this is we want to actually start with the last alien because that's going to be the first one that's going to reach the end and it's also going to be the one that's the lowest down. So we want to make sure that the way that they're moving when they get to the right hand side we're looking at the last one and that's the one that we're applying the first movement to. So doing that we can loop through this node list and creating a variable of x and this instead of being zero because we want to go backwards so we're taking aliens length it's a node list so it does have a length property and we're just subtracting one off of it and then we're taking the value of x and we're making sure while well, x is larger than minus one and x is going to be subtracting one so that's going to be able to break out of the loop and then taking a variable we can set up a variable called l and this is going to be the temp aliens selecting the temp alien item from the array list so that's that node list that we created up here and there were a few variables that we did set when we were creating them and that was the x the y position as well as the direction move so those were the three key ones that we need to take a look at and then we're also updating the aliens accordingly so roughly around the same thing is happening here so we're going to update before we finish the loop we need to update their top and their left positions with whatever the values of the element x and y positions are and then also the direction moving position we have to look at that as well because that might need to be adjusted if we've hit the end and so these aren't going to be the exact positions and i can update these to be l position and then l and so on so this will give us the ability to move them because instead of the div we're referring to the element so this is going to give us the same values that we set when we were constructing the alien. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to check to see if the alien has moved off of the offset position of the container. So let's write that condition. So we've got our L X position. So this is where the alien X position is located. And we're checking to see if X has gone off screen so if it's gone outside of the container dim width area so that means that he's gone too far but we also have to count take into account the offset width of the element as well so we're subtracting getting this position on the far right which is the container dim width and then we're subtracting the alien offset width to that to get the position whenever the alien is about to hit the right hand side. And there's also one other condition. So we're checking to see if that is true or we're checking to see if L X position is less than zero. And this is actually container dim left. And if that's true, then what we need to do is we're going to change direction. So we're multiplying this by negative one. And when you multiply one by negative one, you end up with negative one. But if you multiply negative one by negative one, you end up with a one. So this gives us the ability to kind of flip back and forth between that value, the negative one and the one. So this will allow us to account for direction. We're also going to update the Y position as we want the aliens to move down. So we're incremented by 40. So this gives us our direction movement. And the next thing that we need to do, so we don't need to set the Y position because we're setting it over here. And we just need to account for the player 
alien speed and we're going to multiply this by L direction move as we're setting this and this will give us whichever direction if we're moving left or right. So we're just going to increment the position. So let's try that and see what happens. So now we've got a bunch of aliens, so they're moving. And we initially, we had an error there where they just seemed to drop off because we didn't give an opportunity to move uh, directions. So we're actually starting them off too far over. So let's subtract something off of that left position. So they're going a little bit too far off to the left. So that means that we're positioning them, their original position, their start position, isn't a good start position. So we need to make an adjustment on that. And that's when we were constructing the aliens that we were setting the Y position. So maybe let's add a little bit to that position. So we'll add 50 to it. So we're not going to have these aliens dropping off. So we'll add 50 and we need to also add the 50 down here. So let's uh, see what happens. So now it looks like they're moving properly. And coming up next is where we have to do collision detection and a few other tweaks and adjustments to the game. The other thing too, we don't want the aliens running off of the screen at the bottom. So that basically means that the player lost the game. So we have to account for that. So all of that and the tweaks and adjustments are coming up in the upcoming lesson.